Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of P2G Live. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Majid Waris, and I'm going to be your host. Once again, today we have another special guest with us in the name of Suki Wahiwala. Welcome to P2G Live, Suki. Thank you very much. Now, much before, appreciated, Majid. No, you're most welcome. Thank you for accepting the, the invitation. Before we get into the, the real conversation, I'm, I've, got to have, I've got to share a few details here right now, because Go Suki, you have actually got a lot to do with me being involved with this whole setup. Really? Yeah, you probably don't even realize because two years ago, mm -hmm. I was introduced to Abid Khan, the director, the national director of Chutney and Chat through a mutual friend. Right. And he invited me to a Chutney and Chat business networking event here in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. um, and you happened to be the speaker. Oh. Now, had you not been so good, I probably wouldn't have come back to Pathway or Chutney again after that. Was that a bit of a white lie in there? No, no. Had I not been so good? No, no, no. That was, that was completely uh, the, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. <laughs> but, but you know what? That, that's exactly what happened. And, and again, oh, really? I, I came back again to the next event. And, and here I am now. I'm a part of the, the Pathway team myself. So you've kind of indirectly had something to do with you being here yourself. Genuinely, honestly, I'm truly humbled. I never, yeah. you know, that was... That's you know what? The other coincidence is tomorrow yeah. is the, the next Chutney and Chat event here in Birmingham mm -hmm. at the Tipu Sultan restaurant. And guess who's the keynote speaker? Um, let me think. Mm. <laughs> you, Bonnie Chan? Yes, exactly. Are you trying to inspire me to be doing the replication <laughs> as well? Turning Absolutely. up at yours? It's turned around, hasn't it? It's turned around. It but, has. But God bless you as well. But uh, it's, it's amazing. It's been an amazing journey and it's yeah. been a pleasure getting to know you as well also in the Chutney group. Thank you. Uh, in the WhatsApp group itself. Now, for those people who haven't known you from before or haven't uh, maybe have come across you before tell us a little bit about yourself because i remember you sharing a very fascinating story about yourself on your journey back mm -hmm. from when you went into business and some of the adversities you'd faced and um some of the challenges that you'd faced and how you came overcame them mm -hmm. and went on to do better than you were before so for the for the purposes of the audience and the viewers themselves, um, can you give us a bit of a background? Of course I can. You know, firstly, I've got to say that uh, both Safraz, Abid, and the whole team, yourself, Majid, Thank you. um, really, really humbled to be a part of the whole the CC operation, the Chutney Chat, and also the Pathway to Growth. Um, I've got to say, it's been a great thing to see. The evolution, the growth, the whole flow, it's been really warming. So in context of my past history, um, I have to start, I believe, if I may, because it's not it's not really about me. OK, so the reality is that the, I have to start in a real humble way a journey about my my parents or more importantly, my grandparents and sure. how the journey started. So as a British born Sikh, I'm uh, born and born in a little old town called Peterborough, Peterborough, by the way, <laughs> that's in Cambridgeshire. So. You know, for me, basically, it's not there's, there's no real me involved in it because I do truly believe in, in a maker, in God or in the universe. Um, I know I've been listening to some of your amazing uh, interviews and it d does get quite spiritual. So I, I appreciate you've got a, a good audience that understands the possibilities uh, that we're talking about. Sure. So the reality is that we're I'm seven generations, really, really humbled and honored, seven generations in business. So we've come from a very uh, early sort of land owning uh, background in business and structure. And there's always been kind of three legs in specific um, that have been handed down and obviously the you know the primary was our spiritual understanding and uh, education and the second being connected to in a really humble way within business you know actually actually being business orientation nowadays we're talking about it being entrepreneurial in that context um, and then there's a there was always a, like a third element which was it was about ethics and understanding that we're going to pass this on to our children. And this is the spiritual belief of our life. So seven generations, uh, we originated as a family. And it's the first time I'm actually sharing this opening, so I'm feeling really comfortable. Uh, thank, thank you for you. your for your uh, efforts. Thank you, um, we originate from an area or a space that's uh, called Sialkot, which is actually on now on the side which is uh, of India, which was originally sliced off to being Pakistan. So. It's Did you see now it's in the side of India? No, now from it's in the side of Pakistan. Side of Pakistan, which yeah. is Pakistan. Do you itself. know what the irony is? Yes. You know, Hira, on the part, as part of our pathway team, she's always, uh, she just met you uh, that's earlier right, yeah. on. She's from Sialkot. So yeah. that's probably why our Punjabi meets yeah. quite naturally. Yeah. Punjabi being our mother tongue. Yeah. So from a particular place called Duska, 
mm. and my ancestral all run there. It's been about six or seven generations from that space. I think overall about five that we can track back to about 1763. Mm. Um, so during the partition period of 1947, when uh, the uh, the, the whole sort of migration carried on with that. But basically, in that time frame, we ended up back into uh, a little city called Ambala, uh, which is on the other side, or should I say, half of uh, Punjab. Now it is known in, as in Haryana. Okay. And uh, then we didn't stay there too long. This is my ancestral uh, mm -hmm. elders and uh, parents. Mm -hmm. And they basically then moved over to Delhi. So since then, it's been we've kind of been Delhi based. Um, so the conversation arises that we've had a lovely generational excuse me, a flow uh, within, the, within the family. So that was kind of where I, I sort of honor my ancestor first because we, we really are nothing without our elders, um, sure. without the nurturing, without moving. So in context of my journey, if I may, um, just on a real smooth level, it's just that there's a, a simple level of journey here. I think okay. in around 1990, 1991, I was in the same flow as basically the first business that I ever decided to run. I was in the middle of studying as well as uh, taking a business on. There was a really interesting uh, part of my life where I actually always saw my father involved in property development, understanding uh, architectural designs, drawings, and having them. And somehow he had this eye for efficiency. So mm. I, I just learned standing next to him. You know, I was eight years old when I saw a uh, understood what a, a load bearing wall would be. Yeah. And you know, I think I was about ten or eleven when I understood the processes of letting an eight, letting a property. And mm. in those days, they used to be called bedsits. Okay. It's a, we're talking some years ago now. Yeah, before um, my time, obviously. Of course, Magic. Absolutely. You know, 100%, <laughs> of course. You're, you're, you're a lot younger than myself, oh, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so the reality is that uh, uh, we, I kind of took a really lo lovely sort of journey within yeah. always understanding mm. business and, and being in flow. My parents, both of them came in in the mid-60s. My grandfather was here in the UK around the late 1930s and stayed here until just pre-partition, mm. pre-47, and went back. And before that was my uncle, my older dad's and oldest brother. He was also uh, very well established here in the UK as well, um, in the sense of business, property, that kind of stuff. And he was the implementer of bringing my father into the, the, okay. into the country as well. So that's so, where it started. That's right. Yeah. And he was a lot senior. He was about 20 years senior to my father. Okay. Uh, God rest yeah. his soul. Um, and so that was the journey. That's the, yeah. a little bit of background of my parents. Yeah. Myself, I had a vision I wanted to be an architect because okay. I just saw this mass of paperwork and thought, wow, yeah. so great. Yeah. So that was my vision. Um, and I think... To be honest with yourself, around 2000, so apologies, jumped into your age there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> around 1990 specifically, yeah. I had decided that I was going to continue in A levels and then move on to that direction. Yeah. And uh, my selection pot was around architectural flow. Okay. At that particular time, my mum, who is, uh, who is you know, just a, a tremendous part of my life, and so is my father. Um, they turned around and said to me and said, my mum said that in specific, I think it's your time and you kind of need to step up a little bit and we want you to, I mean, I never was an naughty child, but, you know, we want you to take over one of the businesses. That was the intention. Mm -hmm. And there was a particular business that was slightly failing at that time mm -hmm. uh, because not due to anybody's inability, mm -hmm. but it was more due to uh, a structural change. You know, the, the, my cousins were running it before my brother-in-law's day. They're brilliant, brilliant business people. They were doing mm -hmm. a great job, but they just couldn't, um, the coordination of switches and changes okay. was slightly bitty. The character dropped. Mm -hmm. So... That was the very first business my father set up in 1967, okay. which was a, a housewares uh, business okay. as well. And just for reference, I'm very aware that uh, by uh, Nazir uh, Awan and also yeah. Nasser Awan, both of those two gentlemen, yeah. um, have a very strong connection and heritage with myself because we used to buy it. I mean, we used to buy stock of them for the best part of 35 years. Oh, so, right. Okay. You know, we we yeah. knew that. And then I yeah. was really proud at some stage yeah. we got to a stage where I was actually sending uh, audio back to them in the mid, in the noughties and the early noughties. So right. it's really kind of impressive, yeah. uh, you know, for myself personally. So I hope this is kind of what you want to hear because I'm, it's the yeah, first time yeah. I'm opening okay, up. Okay, no, a lot it's of great. It's stuff. great to, share, to have you sharing all that. Um, there, there came a, a, a part in your life, from what I remember you sharing with us, where a lot had changed for you, um, not only from a commercial or business perspective, but from a personal perspective. And I think both of them uh, kind of intertwined. Uh, in the change which took place within you, mm -hmm. which uh, proved to be the catalyst for change for your future. Um, yes. uh, tell us a little bit more about what had actually happened very briefly and then how your mindset changed 
from those particular events, which um, uh, I'm sure you know what I'm referring to. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. and, and, and how that helps you up till now. Humbled. Um, so we're talking about an event that happened in 2006. So I was very much uh, heavy in business and uh, ran a group of companies by that time. Um, I've been very humbled to have a, a good upbringing, but a very solid grounding. And what happened is, is that uh, I was never really what we classify as the arrogant business person, even though um, I know you're attuned to understanding psychometrics and, and, and science behind your inner psychology, what we call behavioral psychology. Uh, you use that quite effectively within your selling techniques. Yeah, well, for around, about, you're welcome, for around about 20, I think nowadays about 22, maybe even 25 years, I, I did my very first psychometric assessment way, way back in 1990, I think it was maybe 91, mm -hmm. and I was hooked. So mm -hmm. since then, I've been taking a journey on nine or 10 different versions of psychometrics to understand, mm -hmm. which has led me to sort of build my own uh, Syllabus methodology, which I'll talk about yeah. later. But the catalyst was very specific in 2006, but prior to that, the journey had already started to understand there must be a little bit more to life than just opening a business, closing a business, yeah. um, selling a product, yeah. uh, selling a service, yeah. and or buying a house and getting it let. There was, there was something that was engaging inside myself for, I'd say, at least a good decade before. Because in your, in your 20s, you're on fire. Yeah. Bottom line, you're on yeah. fire. You really want to build something, and yeah, you want to be yeah. known for something. And you have this kind of inner gratitude and grit that just says, yeah. get out of my way. You know, yeah. just, I'm going to do it. No matter what happens, let's yeah. make it happen in a, yeah. in a humble way. I will say towards the end of your 20s, you know, around the 28 era, because I don't want to go, we'll talk, touch a little bit of psychology, of yeah. course, the zero to seven years mm. of age is what we classify as the imprint period. And then mm. seven to 14 is also known as the modeling period. And uh, 14 to 21 is known as the, what we call socialization period. And 21 to 28 is what we know as maturity period. Mm -hmm. So how does that make any relevance to my journey? Mm. Because if you think about it realistically, it was around the 27, 28 years of age that questions start to happen. Mm. So at seven, questions start to happen. At, at 14, questions start to happen. 21, questions mm. start to happen. So the reality was it was just my time. Um, and there is a there is a, a real scientific logic to this. Uh, hopefully, may I share in a real humble way that there is a scientific logic that biologically, every single element in the sense of every single cell within our body, from the very first, which is three weeks of your skin, right the through to the marrow and the bone, which takes seven years to actually replace and reproduce itself. So it's the same psychology. Um, and also, if you now go back into the spiritual realm, because I know you're understanding this context of yogic energies and yoga and other spiritual th uh, flows, they all run in seven-year cycles as well. Mm. It's irony that okay, uh, yeah. uh, we call it uh, modern science yeah. actually sits directly mm. on ancient science. Yeah. Now, whether that's from the, uh, the South Asian and North Asian mm. or a, you know, Western worlds, it doesn't make a difference, it's still the same. Mm. There is only one truth and it seems to be quite aligned. So in 2006, what happened to myself was, I was kind of on a journey, constantly growing, um, with I was peaking within a, a bit of brilliant business called Ice Direct. We had grown this to a very large standing, uh, great sort of like, I, I believe a really honorable time for myself and myself, my brother, my two nephews at the time, who we were all very active in the industry, uh, in that particular car audience, but so was the rest of the family. You know, yeah. the, so I had lots of staff and sure. team, we call it all our family, yeah. the ICE, yeah. ICE nice. family. Yeah, um, and that's when I started to first dabble in understanding of a psychology uh, for the external people, because it was internal before, and we were within the staffing systems, within the sales systems, mm. the processes, yeah. uh, strategy of how the company grows, and hence why I've become a business modeling mm. specialist. I tend not to use the word expert, because expert tends to stunt, stunt people's growth, yeah. because we seem to think we've arrived That's somewhere it. with an yeah. expert. So um, as a specialist in that flow, we built companies. I was a multiple business owner. Mm. So I uh, hope I'm not boring everybody here, but I'll, I'll keep on going a bit quicker. The reality was that I realized then in 2006, that some early 2006, I needed a change. And I think mm. my, my body had started to tell me that I needed a change. Well, I had contracted hepatitis A. And hepatitis A, this is in January sort of time of 2006, it was, it's a liver virus. Um, luckily, I was a non-drinker, um, so it didn't really affect me from an alcohol basis. Uh, possibly even, that might have been the reason why I'm still standing here today. Yeah. Um, and I, I believe that everything has a reason. So the reality was that 
I got hepatitis A, and that basically was a liver virus that came in yeah. through from I'd eaten raw fish. Yeah. Uh, we think we've brought it back to that context. Okay. So from that raw fish environment, I contracted hepatitis A. And six months later, without going through the actual nitty-gritty of every step, around July the 16th, mm. in specific, um, well, actually, I will. Do you have? Do you, do you want a bit of a spiritual understanding? I think the food. Well, I think time. I think that's important because um, it's, it's one of the reasons you, we've invited you. I think you. there's. I think in the, in the day to day chores of driving a business, you know, sometimes we find ourselves coasting, or sometimes we find ourselves uh, just simply getting into a lane where everybody else is in, yeah. uh, going through the mechanics of running a business. Um, seldom do we focus on or even reflect on the spiritual or mental you know people have different names for it that yes. some people just will block it off to say no it's just a mental thing uh some people will go in more depth and say no it's a spiritual connection with this yeah. or they'll so, call it a consciousness or, or a consciousness yeah, yes so in 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 either respect it would be interesting to hear your take on the the connection the spiritual or mental or conscious or subconscious uh, the different connections with the um the practical uh, uh elements of running a business i'll be honest with yourself i really am truly humbled to be in this right moment right now yeah because uh it's rare that you get a host who understands those balances mm. so thank you very much no, 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 so no. in context of this um okay so let's put it into context i think i went uh i, I purchased a 14-day holiday and what happened is, is then the 14-day holiday was purchased three days before the holiday was being enacted around July sort of time. I think it was the 2nd of July I was going to travel. Um, I actually got a phone call, and the phone call was from the holiday agent. And what they did is they'd flipped the story in the sense of the, the product we purchased 14 days, and they'd called us and said to us, oh, sorry, Mr. Wahiwala, we have a problem. And it was my secretary who took the phone, uh, phone call, but sorry, Mr. Wahiwala, we have a problem. It's a 12-day uh, travel and we can't uh, we have to give okay. you a refund and so at that particular time obviously you're in the hype of your own clarities and mind mm. and uh, you know maybe maybe at that time there was a little bit of arrogance that was a part of my nature as well since then I'm quite aware of those sort of flows and I, I truly understand that I, I just try to be um, humane because the reality is I'm not going to take anything with me anyway so sure. I truly understand that so um, okay so I then turned around and get, said to the gentleman in a very fast, harsh way, so what do you, I said, I am a CEO of a war, war, war. Yeah. but the reality, the reality was I said to look, have you got something else to travel on the fourth, uh, the second, sorry, because I'm, I'm yeah. ready to go. We've made yeah. all the conveniences, yeah. you know, the arrangements are done, I'm taking two weeks off. Yeah. Um, and he said, no. Okay. I said, great. So would it not, and this is, I suppose, the first element where I'd calmed down and actually given some kind of feedback to him, mm -hmm. and I thought I'd stretch the mentality, uh -huh. which I'm truly humble for. Um, I said, would it not be a good idea if you turned around and offered me, because I was going to Florida, mm. uh, would it not be a good idea if you just offered me maybe the uh, hopper passes or something in the context and mm. not cancel the holiday mm. and just give me some more extra value and then yeah. I'll be extra value and that might be comfortable. Is that yeah. fair? That's something odd yeah. to Would you be happy with that? And I said, of course. <laughs> Why don't just you try me? I'm waiting for you to ask the question. Just yeah. try me for yeah. that, you know. So anyhow, so bless him. He did. He went away and he made it happen. Mm. And so what we did is we travelled on the 2nd and we came back on the 16th. Right. Uh, sorry, 15, uh, the 14th. Yeah. Um, it was a Friday the 14th. Mm. And throughout the holiday, we had a lovely, lovely time. I didn't realise until I started looking back at uh, some of my pictures that I seemed to be very keely, you know, leaning over a little bit, tend to be mm. a bit curled up as opposed to being the usual mm. myself. So the story short, I arrived back mm. in the country on mm. 14th. Mm. Origin originally aimed to come in back into the UK on the 16th. Okay. Guess who collapsed on the 16th? In England. Wow. Me. So what happened is the question we ask ourselves between the 14th and the 16th. How did the holiday become a 12 to a mm. 14 to a 12 day? Yeah. So I'm forever grateful for that conversation yeah. of what happened to whoever was looking after me. Because if I had collapsed in the US, yeah. they really would not have had, A, my blood type, my structures and stuff. Yeah. And just to give you some, uh, give some validation to this, yeah. I, when I collapsed, I was two hours away from not being alive. Wow. And at... The, the tender age, you could say, of 31 at the time. You could have been in a position where if you hadn't received the necessary medical treatment within two hours, then it's possible you wouldn't have been here today. So obviously there's a lot of connections uh, with everything that's happened and you feel that there's, it's all interconnected in, in some way. Um, deeply. deeply. Deeply, yeah. Um, 
How has that impacted on the way you make business decisions now? Because you've come out of that and you've started all sorts of different types of, I mean, I know you get involved in psychometric, uh, psychometric profiling and personality uh, traits and checking on right. different things for to ensure that the people, not only the ones that you're mentoring are mm -hmm. suited to you, but you're also going to be the right them, person yeah. for them. And, um, and also how one can adapt so that we are suited to our mentees. Yeah. So even if a mentee comes to me with, which every individual, yeah. uh, Alfred Korzybski yeah. teaches the, that a perspective. Mm. We all understand the perspective coming from the latter house mm. uh, psychologists, but 1931, a gentleman called Alfred Korzybski, a Polish American, he wrote a beautiful book called Science and Sanity. Mm. And in there he says that we are meaning making machines. Mm. The reality of our life bases upon our internal meaning that we ascribe. Mm. So um, if, you, if you don't know his work, I'm sure most of your um, listeners and viewers will probably know something like the map is not the territory. Mm. Now this, the map is not territory, which is assigned to um, amazing psychologists such as neurolinguistics, uh, mm. NLP, but actually it's coming from his work. It's in his book, it's clearly there, right. 1931. It says the map is not the territory, mm. which then falls onto what we were just yeah. touching on before the interview, yeah. that every human being has their own internal perception of the world yeah. and their own version of the world, right? Yeah. So that's the principle in standing. Sorry, yeah. I interjected in your conversation there. No, but... no, that's fine, perfectly fine. I mean, it brings me back to this, um, we talk about business, right? We talk about being innovative and stuff. And what you've just mentioned about you, you being uh, the character and, and having your own uh, particular way of uh, describing or understanding the world around yes. you, there's a, there's a word called sonda. I don't know whether you've ever come across it. I think it's a sonders. And, and the funny thing is it's actually quite a new word. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody just made it up and they ascribed, or the way they describe it is it's something which um, it, it, it's, it's the notion of you being the main character and everybody else is extras in your play. I like um, it. So it's, it, yeah. and, and I really found that fascinating because in reality, that's really what we feel, don't we? As individuals, yes. we are the main character in our story and everybody else is extras, aren't they? Mm -hmm. um, but what I'm trying to, I suppose, uh, what I want to get, uh, steer this conversation towards is how this kind of mindset mm -hmm has impacted your business decision. So you've, you, you, you had those businesses that you had on, up until when you fell ill. And if I remember correctly, you made some changes and you started some new things after that because your mindset changed. Totally. Um, tell us a little bit more about that. I can. So what happened is, is obviously with this near-death experience, I um, was two hours away from life. So I found, I possibly felt at the time, maybe I was a little bit aggressive about the fact or uncomfortable, the why me type syndrome. Mm. But then very quickly, I think I spent two months in hospital and 11 months away from the group of companies and my families and everybody else under the notion of uh, in toxins such as, you know, morphines, etc. The scenario was that at that particular time, just to put a bit of impact back towards it, that, you know, you're talking a 31 year old, I'd spent my time in that in that environment. I had a young family, you know, my wife is only 29 years old, uh, core of my life. I'm the youngest of eight children as well. So I was the youngest of them all. I have one brother and another six sisters as well, which wow. I'm really blessed with. Wow. And at the time I had three children. I, we just had our son, we had two daughters and the son. And the irony was that it's something very impersonal, very personal to myself, that my wife had lost my father-in-law, her, her father, um, at the age 10. So it was it was funny or should I say spooky or uh, whichever you want to see it. Yeah. You know, the, the reality yeah. was it was it, it was supposed to be where was it supposed to be where my daughter who was well, at 10 yeah, years old at I the same stage when I from. fell ill. Yeah. So the reality of life really sort of impacted and hit me. I had a lot of time to sort of re renegotiate my brain and understand and the true understanding was that I was always a spiritual individual hmm. and um, before before you continue, you yep. mentioned something interesting. You you said that you renegotiated with your brain. Yep. How do you renegotiate with your brain? Beautiful. So, what happened is I was always, oh, I'll connect it back to the conversation yeah, I yeah. made. So I was always a spiritual individual. Hmm. But what happens is in one's life there is a, a time, usually that twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine sort of age, yeah. when questions start to happen. Yeah. And the questions align themselves because. After the age of 21, you tend to be, you start to fit your accuracies of what you actually are and who you are. Your, your language will change and you'll say things like, now that's not how I do it. Mm. Or I wake up at five o'clock in the morning. Mm. Or 
I don't leave until the job's done. So this is now a very, it's what we call sealed conversation. So your brain starts to enact I ams, you know, mm. your, 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 your intensity of life yeah. seems to switch to learning yeah. to I am and performing yeah. in the 20s. Yeah. So the context of my conversation was that at this time, when 28, you start to get what we classify as everybody gets within, so we meaning the behavioral psychologists and people in this sort of environment, mm. we understand that there seems to be an ignition of spiritual understanding. Mm. Somebody starts to ask a question. You start mm. to get feelings. That, why is it that everything's right or wrong? Yeah. And you've been through that. Yeah. You see it in your face right now. Uh, at the same age as well, I think it was 26, 27, when I went through Spooky. a bit of a a bit of a real 360 on myself. Bless you. Um, so that was only last year, right? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> so <laughs> honestly, what happens is you start to ask these internal questions. And you, my question of I started to negotiate myself, because we always have what we classify as a conscious brain, which is mm. the beta brain. Yeah. And uh, we always have the uh, what we classify as the alpha brain, which is AKA also known, also known as the animal instinct brain. Mm. So now we're talking about instinct, because you mm. use that quite subjectively mm. uh, um, within your, uh, and powerfully within your your trainings instinct what is instinct so instinct is when you have a feeling for example if i gave you an example a lion would be hungry and it would eat but as soon as the lion has eaten you can walk in front of the lion mm. because a he is not getting up and if it was a female it would not get up she would not get up either it's not interested mm. they're digesting now mm. so if they're thirsty they drink if they're hungry they eat they don't have a larder yeah. that they keep the excess meat in mm. and keep it chilled so they can yeah, pull yeah. it out later yeah so it's a now game. That's yeah. what animal or alpha brain is. Yeah. Then we have a negotiation yeah. ability, which comes into our beta brain, if I can explain. Yeah. I go into this a lot more depth within the Synergus methodology, and I'm really okay. humbled you're asking me. So in the beta brain, it's when we kind of, the first time Homo sapien had what we classify as, the, or we think Homo sapien had a conscious brain okay. uh, instilled, at which case we ask us a question. We'd say, what if, so if we give you a scenario, mm. uh, the what ifs start. Mm. So that doesn't mean that we don't have any conscious brain until 20. Of course not. Mm. I'm trying to say we start to become much more aware of why we do things. Mm. Because we've had the ceiling of our learning and we start mm. saying, oh, I think it's a bit more about me. You know, I do it this way. You know, no, I don't go there. No, I go here. No, no, I'm not really much of a pupper. Oh, no, I watch movies. No, I don't yeah. watch movies. So you start to get very sealed. Yeah. At which case, what is the next learning? Yeah. So we're in constant learning. I mean, yeah. my faith is Sikhism. Mm. And if you pronounce it correctly, it should be Sikh. And if you pronounce it within the English tongue, it's Sikh. Mm. But the, if you look at the uh, traditional Punjabi pronunciation of Sikh, Sikh actually in the translation of that means learn. So as yes. the reality of it is that we are only disciples, we are students consistently. Mm. So the moment that actually hits your head, when you start realizing there is something more to learn, yes. we start to excel ourselves. So now if we turn it into the English explanation, we yeah. say seek, we're yeah. also looking for something we're else. Yes. Is that? It's but, amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I, I think most of the um, mainstream religions have that ethos or grounding of of uh, of learning. Um, if we go I, even to from the Christian Judo Christian uh, faiths, it's all about learning. Even in Islam, you know, the first words which were recited to the Prophet Muhammad were Iqra, which in Iqra. Arabic means read, recite. Absolutely. You know, um, read so, and recite. Yeah, read, so, understand, and recite. Yeah, because it's not so, it's, so simple to explain like it's, that. It's all about it. it's all about the learning. So yeah, sorry, continue. Okay. So. In, in context, the, the Sikh faith itself actually is uh, a faith where it's really quite heavily, what we call, let me give you an example, it's actually actually very spiritual pathway. Mm. Um, it is a spiritual humanity-based mm. process, mm. and the religious name or mm. pathway is Sikhism. Mm. So the, that's in my, my poor understanding, I suppose. Uh, I'm just going to share this, I understand yeah. and see the world. So it's a very acceptant uh, faith of everything else, and actually we mm. believe that everything actually is one. Mm. There is no right or wrong way. It's the only way. There is, mm. there's, you know, everyone has the truth. So I'm, I really uh, confer with your uh, beautiful alignment of all faiths have mm. the same manage. So going back to the context, if I may, um, questions were asked. And the negotiation starts. The beta brain starts to negotiate with the unconscious brain mm. or the unconscious brain, what we mm. call the heart chakra or mm. the, the brain chakra. And we start thinking about, what, you know, why do I want to do things? And then we, at, with this why question, we have what's called a, a slight disparity or a disalignment. Um, you could say in this modern language of behavioral psychology called a duality. Mm. So we have start to pull a little bit of a duality, which within itself actually stunts your acceleration. Mm. Um, so 
the moment you realize that you've actually got this duality going on, you can realign it as quick as you can. Mm. So the point is that I created a methodology I spoke about on TED. Um, yes, very you were, uh, uh, Suki was actually one of the speakers on, on TED, uh, which is a very, it's an international platform where uh, international speakers uh, Oh, actually, uh, it's, it's more of a request you receive, isn't it? Yes, yeah. you, you, you don't just... You don't, you don't just turn up or request. You don't apply. It's, yeah, you don't apply. You they ask the you yes. to come on. So uh, a fantastic Very achievement there. So and, and within that process, what happened is I actually shared a seven-step process, which yeah. if anyone's interested, I'm sure you give them a link and go on there. Yeah, a seven-step yeah. process where people can actually can make decisions in a conscious, systematic way, Yeah. but also within those seven steps, it actually ignites your unconscious mind as well. Mm. So a story within itself. So what really changed in my world, I started to think differently. Mm. I started wanting different things. And really I started thinking about less about what I wanted and more about what I could deliver mm. to the world. And that inside, outside, that, that looking inwards, I, 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 started to, to move towards, uh, if I could take a spiritual understanding, started mm. moving towards the out, outer self. Mm. So it's about you, you, you. So how can mm. I help you as opposed mm. to you? Value. Helping you. Yeah. yeah. So I just wanted to try to deliver. Yeah. And so I started to, sorry, beg your pardon. I started to just collect my thoughts and start mm. thinking I want to change. So 2006 was a big change for me. Mm. Um, I kind of came back to business around 2007, mid, after this period of time. And I literally took a hard decision. I didn't want to do what I was doing. Mm. So I kept on to the portfolio, kept the property businesses, all those sort of things were all fine. And I just literally told my, my brother to his dismay, I'm stopping. I'm not going to be involved in the retail organization anymore. I've decided mm. I'll walk and do my way. And he sort of went, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, which case, I don't think he really understood it. And then, yeah. and then I think 2008 was my last year. 2009, January onwards, I didn't open any more shops, mm. didn't close any more shops, didn't do any yeah. more retailing directly. Mm. I've still been involved in merchant trading and importing stuff and that kind of stuff, not, mm. not gone. Um, and I have a very different perspective of life as well. But I started to something, an itch. I started to itch my itch, mm. and it was about trying to create something a bit bigger. I just yeah. want to point. This is a poignant point, and then I'll yeah. hand back to yourself. If I may. Sorry, I'm talking too much, team. I, no, I get very okay. excited about these yeah. sort of things, and in a very humble way. Um, so today, yeah, we have a platform, and uh, I help, you know, thousands of people across the globe, which I'm truly, truly humbled for. Thirty-seven thousand, and yeah. I have nearly seven hundred live clients where I'm yeah. helping through mentoring programs, which we'll talk later. But I think the reality of life hit towards me, and, and I realized that I had been brought up understanding that none of us are going to take anything with us. I yeah. truly understand that. But that, to me, I used to dismiss it because it felt very negative. Mm. I'm not sure if you feel that. You know, guess what? You're not going to take anything with you. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to take anything with you. You're going to leave it all here. It becomes very, um, it, it sort of slows you down a little bit. Mm. And, and I used to ignore it, even knowing it. Mm. But after I think a bit more thinking, I started to realize what it really, truly meant. And the reality is that in the Sikh faith and in all faiths as well, you're going to leave it all here, but then it puts a bit of a magnifying glass on it and says, if you are going to leave it here, I think the bigger question is, if you're going to leave everything here, have you accepted that? Mm. And the moment you accept that, it's about, what are you going to leave here? Very good question. What are you going to leave here? And so that, we could say, legacy processes, yeah. thoughts. Yeah. At that point, it became a delirious mission of mine to just share everything I had. Because yeah. I had to leave a body of work within other human beings within the waste because I thought mm. that was I felt that was my calling. So mot it's motivation, isn't it? Yeah. Within because itself, if you. if you if you've not left anything, what use have you made of your time? Mm. Uh, in the context the of yeah, yeah. yeah, in the context of that spiritual or conscious or uh, whatever people would like to call it yeah. in those within the, that framework. Um, so you now are in a position where you are sharing your uh, journey, your wisdom, your teachings across the world to people in several different uh, uh, continents. Um, and you, you've created your own programs in which you do that. Yes. I suppose one of the questions the audience may be thinking is, through the realms of this, 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 this whole spiritual paradigm, mm -hmm. how, how do I connect with myself consciously and subconsciously or unconsciously, depending on which way you look at it. Um, so that how, how can that benefit me and my business? Because most of us, when we have conversations and I have conversations with lots of different types of business people and I will continue to do so on the P2G Live platform, and we'll be talking about technical stuff. We'll be talking about PR. We'll be talking about marketing. Mm. We'll be talking about sales. We'll be talking about, you know, uh, IT and whatever else there is out there. Um, 
this is obviously very different, and I'm sure the audience will have realized this is a very different kind of a conversation. <laughs> I, I could be very technical uh, if you really wanted yeah. to, but no, no, that's, you know, that's I just, great. I get the feeling that your vibrations are a different flow. Yeah, I mean, we, were having, uh, we, were having, we were having that connection earlier on before yes. we even started this, but I think from the audience perspective, um, one of the key questions could be, I'm just thinking from their point of view, we, we've obviously spoken very in depth, well, for some of them, it may be uh, very much in depth. They may not have explored this this uh, side to business before. But how does that connect with business? How does that connect with the decisions you make? Okay. How does that connect with the the thought process, the mindset? I mean, you mentioned something really good there, which is the fact that if we're not going to take anything with us, what exactly are you leaving behind? Yeah. yeah. So that's that's a good question because that's motivation to leave a legacy. What else can you share with the audience, which, which from a spiritual perspective or, um, or conscious, subconscious, unconscious perspective, you know, what, what, what it is it? What does it mean, the psychological perspective of the, the business? Because it's not all mechanical and it's not all technical. There's a lot of psychology which goes behind the motivation to run a business uh, and to continue it to grow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my father says very, very simply, he says, at the end of the day, you, you, you can't see mm. the fragrance of a rose. Yeah. Doesn't dismiss that it's there. Yeah. Okay. So it's just a lovely thought just to leave you in the context. So yeah. the reality is, is that how do we align ourselves in a conscious, unconscious, subconscious, whichever way you want to talk about yeah. it? The reality is that um, it starts off with great questions. Yeah. And I realized that the, the best deals that I did were when I was in my intuition and I just made an intuitive decision. And they were the highest and the most lucrative uh, deals that I had. So I looked for the, 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 the flow. Now, we can all live off what we call conscious will. Do you mm. understand this? So you can wake up and say, I'm going to get up today's the day. Yeah. That's it. We're going to do this. We're yeah. going to do that. And that works. Absolutely, it can. Mm. But I'm sure your, your audience has had in the past where you have what we call one of those dull moments or days yeah, where you just wake yeah. up and think, oh, I can't yeah. bother to get out of bed today. Yeah. I don't fancy getting up, whatever, whatever. Yeah. And to the extent that you know, I feel tired, yeah. maybe I'm spiritually worn down, energetically worn down. Yeah. The reality is that in life, when we look at product life cycles, and I'm very aware that you're in that, you have educated in that flow as well, you have, an, you have what we call an introduction period, an intro mm. period, and then it peaks off, you know, going, without going through the seven steps of it, you go there, it peaks off to what we classify at some stage, a cash cow period. Mm. Your actual energy level is exactly the same. Mm. So the question to yourself is that if you run on just will alone, mm. you will do a peak and a drop, a mm. peak and a drop. So I'm not sure if any of the audience here has ever experienced to mm. what we call a, I'm, I'm, I'm great, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm great, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm great, which is what we call the yeah. yo-yoing of energy. Yeah. Um, well, there is actually a scientific process behind this. Yeah. Now, I, I will admit that I've, I've, I've attached some clarities of spirituality behind it as well. And this yeah. is what I do in all of my training, in all of my yeah. educations, and all of my mentoring I share. Mm. But let's just stick to the practical flow for a second. Sure. The practical flow is that basically, it's what we classify as, we have if I can be very clear, and I want to really give some energy of focus here as well, that we have two, what we classify as egos. There is an ego, which, which is uh, what, what, what is, is modernly or remotely or majority of the time seen as that egotistical, I am, yeah. I am this and I am that, which is actually what I call the ignorant ego. Mm. Okay? So this is a part of the cynicist methodology. And then there's the other ego. And by the way, Islam says this as well, and so does all the other faces. I fully mm. understand that. Um, and I respect it. So it is, without a doubt, not my stuff. Everything I talk about is, uh, is from upstairs, wherever it's coming through. Mm. So we have an outer ego, but we also have what we call a preservation ego. And the preservation ego is what allows you to get up in the morning. Mm. Uh, it allows you to be useful to other people. Mm. It allows you to dress yourself well. It allows you to brush your teeth. You know, the mm. basic simplicities of life. Without this self-value, which is also coming from a section of ego, mm. there would be no action. Mm. So the question here is inner and outer ego. Now, how does this relate to our question of energy, of focus, of uh, ambition and, mm. and creativity and flow? When to get into flow, which is the cash cow period of time, there has to be an alignment of your will, of your want, of what you, who it's for, what it's for, um, and how it will actually help you in life, and in specific, what if all those questions come into context. But with ego, we have, if you run just on your will, which is basically the external version of ego, the, mm. the version that we're trying to maintain and control, mm. you end up with what's classified as ego depletion, which is what I call. 
And this depletes not the, not the aggressive, uh, overt ego. It actually starts to damage and retract the helpful ego, mm -hmm. the ego that actually is preserving you, the ego that's necessary for life, that's necess necessity for you to be valuable to anybody. And whether it comes to selling or not selling, it's the, it's the bit that comes up which you usually think, oh, that's you know, my, my soft nature, that's my integrity that comes up. Well, the integrity is fed from that positive ego. There's a negative ego, positive ego. So when we run on ego depletion, we have a flow uh, within my context of Synegus methodology that you boost yourself, you're in that position on, e on the, what we call the will to do something. And at some stage, that will naturally tapers off. Mm. So it's a bit like a turbo. Mm. It cuts in, and when it cuts in, it goes boom. And then when you're up foot soft, it goes down, and it takes mm. that same gestation period to lift it back up again. Mm. So the question here arises that how can you manage this ego? How can you manage this will? Mm. There's two simple things, strategy mm. and structure. Brilliant. They need to be added to will. Yeah. So for example, if you're building a building like this, we're yeah. on the third or fifth floor, floor here, um, you can imagine running up and down with a pail of water, mm. or you can imagine having a scaffolding around the building, mm. which then assists you to be safe and move up and down as well. So the story short, if I may, if you have the will to do something, mm. always find somebody team to go and give you the strategy and the structure. And if you have the strategy and structure, go and find somebody to give you the emotional will to get up and move. So when we're talking about behavioral psychology, the inner psychometrics of your life, it really is the key, and I have three steps within there. Mm. You know, you, you, I'll, I'll talk about it in a second, but the reality is that you need to marry your will and the strategy and the structure together. Mm. Without, the, without balance, you have a constant flow, mm. which means that only then can you get so in a position. We, always, we all know yeah, these big yeah. words of buzzwords called yeah. leverage and yeah. da, da, da. You can't yeah. get to that leverage stage without yeah. the strategy and flow mixing True. together. True. If somebody uh, was wanting to find out more about um, strategy, structure, the the kind of things that we've already discussed, you know, yes. uh, psychometric profiling and stuff like that. What would you advise them to do? Well, uh, I'm going to be biased because well, I, believe yeah, yeah. That, I believe that uh, we have st structures and we have also, um, very importantly, may I share a website address? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go for it. So yeah. it's called BGA, that's Bravo Golf Alpha blueprint.com, which is basically the Business Growth Accelerator Blueprint. And it's a bit of a mouthful, hence why it's reduced down to BGA Blueprint. When you go onto that website, you'll see four beautiful videos that are absolutely content heavy and they're free. But what I talk about there is there's actually, we do a, what's called an incubation or an accelerator for any business. Okay. Even if you're a conscious business or an, we classify as a spiritual business, whichever. Mm. So through the Synegus methodology, I've created uh, a seven step, but it's actually with the delivery. Tell us a bit more about Synegus methodology. Yeah, it's what I've been talking about most yeah, of the time, yeah. that balance of it. Yeah. So, Thank you. Uh, there's six steps within this methodology where, where you can put whichever business you are in, whether you're a service-led business or a product-led business, um, whether you're a, a therapist or a, a service uh, consultant, you can get involved over, over three days of incubation directly with myself. I believe mm. very, very highly. It doesn't make a difference whether I'm established and was financially free at 27. It makes no relevance to anybody. Mm. I, I thoroughly enjoy unlocking individuals. So we go through a six step process mm. the first one being actually revisiting your plan and your structure mm. then we work on who you are as a person mm -hmm. which is your unlocking of yourself which is very much uh, connected to what you you uh, talk about as well majid so i really truly align humbly with yourself Thank you. in the context of we talk about a three-step process of who you are truly on the inside, not your external mask. Yeah. We go into your in unconscious yeah. mind and we start to, we scientifically, by the way, yeah. deliver a report, which then you can allow yourself to see how you actually see the world, mm -hmm. that uniqueness, that yeah. how I see the world. And yeah. what you were talking about earlier on, the the uh, uh, everybody else is a spectator or what we call yeah. you know, uh, yeah. extras. Um, so you start to learn yourself. And then we also teach you in the same time, same day, in the mm -hmm. same segment to learn to I, uh, what we call acknowledge other people's okay. model of the world as well. Yeah. So once you've got those those two parameters in place, we then teach you how to adapt to them very quickly, mm. which is the three steps. So learn yourself, learn others, and learn to adapt. Yeah. Now that, just to give you an example, has been paramount to the secret of my success. Mm. If, if, if I can classify yeah. anything I've done as yeah. successful, that's the key. Then we move into what we classify day two in the morning. We come across, we walk into what I talk about in TED. It's the actual DFT, which is the daily focused time. Now, it's actually a philosophy around time management because we go to the, I go to the under, underlying challenge that business has mm. and actually aligns it with the psychometric mm. and shows them 
the, I show them the areas and the times they should mm. be doing to certain key tasks. Mm. So sometimes you wake up in the morning and think, I'm going to make some sales today. A, you're not getting the sales. You're not seem to be vibrating with the sales. You don't seem to be aligning with it. Mm. I'll give you the answer why. So mm. we go through that process and I should say to them, do you realize there's a bit missing? Mm. So I align it with spiritual understanding, yogic understanding, and all the philosophies in there with, with, with humbleness. In the afternoon, we then start talking about how you could, it moves into how to sell without mm. selling. And this is basically the truth behind sales. You talk about this regularly. Mm. Uh, it's something I've been, you know, for 27 years, I've been sharing the same philosophy. It's how I was taught for seven generations. Don't sell people, give them what they want. Mm. We've all heard the analogy in the process of knocking on 10 doors with a glass of water. Yeah. But you can knock on 10 doors with a glass of water. I was like, okay, so you don't want the water. What else do you want? Mm. You know, if you, if, you don't go, if you go with a glass of water, there's, you might get one or two cells out of yeah. 10. And the yeah. option you've got, I'm sure you use the analogy, yeah. but you go with a, with a glass of water holding your conversation. Say, what would you like to drink? Yeah. And then say, no problem. I'll be back in an hour's time and I'll bring yeah. it for you. Yeah. And if you're clever enough, you'll take a deposit. But other than <laughs> that, you go to the doors and at least you can increase that maybe to 8 yes. out of 10. So we increase that yeah. process. So we understand how... Now that you've learned kind of like where your mission is, why you're getting involved in business in the first place, which is day one, the second half of day one, understanding yourself deeply and understanding how to identify other people, it then walks into your time management because you've got to be able to mm. call at certain times with your yeah. own body clocks and structure. Yeah. And then in the afternoon on day three, yeah. or day two, we talk about how to actually align with other people's sales program, right. their, their structure yeah. alignment. And then on day three, which is the, 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 the last day, we go into profitability yeah. because people think sales is sales. Vanity. Yeah. It's, we go into the sanity elements. Brilliant. We talk about the hard mm. graft of figures and information mm. and what it actually talks about, but in a real soft way of, I don't like things complicated. I really yeah. like them very simple. So I hope this is getting where I'm coming across. Yeah. And then on the final section, we talk specifically about retention of your clients and increasing their sales within yourself. Now, we all know the 80-20, I understand that, but there's, there's some sciences behind it. Of so course. you go through a whole three days <clears throat> called the BGA Blueprint, um, it's mind-blowing. Uh, if you, when you look on the page, you'll see some of the testimonials of people who have done it across mm. the globe. And it's also backed by the British Chamber of Commerce. It's backed by KPMG. It's backed by Forbes, a number of people which I'm uh, humbled to be a judge with as well and a business mentor for. And, and basically, they've, they've, it's basically it's, it's what we classify in Punjabi, we'll say Samburan. Samburan means it's actually very complete. But the difference is specific. If anybody has studied with myself or learned from myself, uh, and I, again, I, just for focus, I don't believe I've got anything good to give, um, you'll see that I'm a very a very individualistic sort of trainer. Mm. I, I, it doesn't make a difference if I've got 100, mm. 500, or whether I've got 10. Mm. Everybody gets a one-to-one -one training. Brilliant. You mentioned you've mentioned a few key elements there with business. You've mentioned yep. time management. You've mentioned sales. You've mentioned... Um, Productivity, um, behavioral psychology, behavioral psychology, and these are all, I suppose, the the key terms which have possibly helped you in business. One hundred percent. I only and, deliver what's helped me. Yeah. So, uh, in in summary, just to round up this conversation, because usually we're on for like forty minutes. Oh no! And you know what? I'm ruining your, your segment. You know sorry. what? We could probably carry on for Bless hours. You. It's been fifty minutes nearly, wow. and we didn't even realize. I'm sorry, team. And, I'm really and, sorry. And, <laughs> we were just getting warmed up. I think you know. Oh wow. But. Uh, but if we were to say in summary from these elements, if what did you mention again? Uh, time management, productivity. So in order, we would have yep. basic learning yourself first. Learning yourself first. Learning yeah. other people. Self awareness. Yeah, self awareness, awareness of other people. Yeah, Ex respecting their space and adapting correctly. Um, we would go into time management to understand how yeah. you can philosophy your brain and function your peak times of, of working, how to actually sell without selling yeah. and humbly connect with people yeah. and really give them a service, you know, connect with them truly, yeah. move into a, a, an element of actually truly understanding what business profit really is yeah. and at what level is it contribution and yeah. what level is it become profit and uh, how, to, how to run a successful business. And then finally also to understand how to maximize the customer, the one customer, the mm. 10 customers you've actually really got mm. and actually really serve them properly. Yeah. And that's the growth. I mean, if you look at uh, the uh, um, uh, Walmart, you'll understand the principal understanding there was exactly the same. He listened to his customers mm. and listened to his staff, and that's how the network grew. Brilliant. The world, the world's largest. Fantastic. Well, you know what? Um, I wish we could carry on because I, I, was, I was personally just getting warmed up, and I didn't realize how, how quickly the time had gone past. Do we have any questions, by the way? A couple. Oh, brilliant. And by the way, before the questions come in, I just want to thank you for being here and uh, listening to my my conversation. Uh, it's been slightly different. 
And now we're going to go for the questions, I think. Thank you very much, Majid, as well, for having me here. Okay, so there's a question here. Uh, how do you balance spirituality with business? How do you know where to draw the line between heart and head based decisions? Is that, uh, is that from a uh, follow on question uh, from Sarit? Yeah, so okay, so Sarit says absolutely work to live not live to work so um so, so hi sarit because i know oh, sarit, i know you, I, uh, sarit, I, I know you very well and thank you we were actually texting just earlier on today so if i can share there are, it depends on whether you're what we classify as an introverted energy or an extroverted energy because that's what's going to flip it so the reality is let's go for an extroverted energy first if i may and by the way sarit you're an introverted energy um so <laughs> extroverted energies you would got be that something... for free on ptg live <laughs> <laughs> um, um and i wasn't a pompous answer it's just i, I kind of know you so uh, extroverted energies should always go with their heart first and then put the strategy in place. And that's basically the strategic part is what we call the conscious brain, and that's that brain. And the heart element is the spiritual element. I, does this feel good? Do I want to do this? Um, how will I do this comes second. Does that make sense? And then if you go the other way around and become introverted energy, the introverted energy has to put the tactic, the strategy, and the planning first, which is the consciousness. And then you move into what we classify thereafter, the spirit and the understanding of, do I actually want to do this? Do I even feel as I want to do it? So I hope that's answered the question. It depends on which one you are. If you're a person who tends to regenerate yourself on in your private space then you're probably an introverted energy if you love to be around uh, yeah. characters and personalities like magic um, <laughs> you'll probably be yourself what we classify boom boom uh, you'll probably be a bit more what we call uh, extroverted in energy so you recharge in the in the third person's energy or you recharge in your personal energy so if you're personal then you strategize first and then you ask yourself, is this really what I want to do? And if you're an extroverted engineer, you, you literally st go, I'm going to do this. This is what I'm going to do. Now let's work out the strategy. Yeah. And actually, I have to repeat, repeat back. If you watch the video uh, DFT, which is Daily Focus Time Management, actually, there's a hidden agenda behind there as well. I have to be open and honest with you. The seven steps naturally align. If you follow the seven steps, it naturally aligns your conscious and your unconscious brain. So it actually affects every psychometric behaviorally. So you'll be able to balance yourself just by following the seven steps. That's that's the honest way. Fantastic. Thank you very Thank much you. for that, Fosuki. Uh, we have Manjit, uh, who's probably also hey, familiar with you. Ninja, uh, I think, yes. Yeah, Manjit says, uh, Suki helped me to find my way back to my faith. I searched for something that centers me. He helped me realize what it was, not by telling me, but asking me questions. This helped me move forward, both personally and professionally. So it's a general comment, but I suppose there's a there's a there's a good lesson there. I mean, Thank you, Manjit. most uh, mentors and uh, coaches specifically need to know how to ask the right questions. So, um, and then the answer comes from. Uh, within themselves. So, thank you. Um, God bless you, and uh, thank you very much. And you just keep you going. Um, so I just uh, just share something yeah. very quickly about yeah. the mentoring and coaching, if I may. Yeah. So, a coach is a, a trained individual who can unlock other people's language, understanding, and their well value of themselves, um, and doesn't necessarily hatch, actually have to have what we call industry knowledge. Mm. But a mentor, just to be very clear with yourself, is somebody who actually has specific industry knowledge and is somewhere can possibly shortcut some of this journey and be somewhere with the person beforehand and actually hold their hand and move them there. Now, if you actually get somebody who's attuned uh, is in skill within the coach, as well as the uh, yeah. the ability to a, to get somebody there quickly. Big bonus. It's, it's, a, it's a warm so, heart. So, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Thank you. No, no, no. Thank you very much. It's very valuable. I mean, some people do get confused between the difference between coaches and mentors. That's right. Yes. Um, but uh, are we going to have to, sadly, cut it short, uh, cut it there? Um, I'm going to say once again, thank you very much, Suki, for, uh, for your uh, attendance here and, and joining us here on Pathway to Grow and the PTG Live platform. It's been a, 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 an honor and a pleasure. I'm sure we're going to continue this conversation we were having so we were doing we were having this conversation before we even went live yes. um and we could probably carry on for hours i would so uh i, I think if anybody uh, just as, i just want to say humbly honestly i said i started with this conversation i'll end with it again i sincerely thank you very much for allowing welcome. me to uh, fulfill my inner mission of helping as many people thank as I can you, on the planet. Thank you for and I'm sure if anyone wants to get hold of me, they can find my details on the yeah, tag. Yeah, absolutely. You've got the, the business boardroom, you've got the business growth accelerator blueprint uh, at uh, bgablueprint.com. Well, uh, may you can I offer something? Just, I know it's unplanned, I do apologize. Okay. But we've got a, a two week window at the moment, so if you don't mind, I may yeah, share. go for it. I have an online platform, it's a membership site where I specifically go through. Um, all of my journeys and the knowledge and actually I fulfilled a load of uh, trainings and very high-end trainings that's why I specialize in mm. getting trainings out of people um, it's a bit like a university but it's called the inspired business dot club okay. um, but for the next two weeks 
it's completely free. So okay. if you get yourself signed up, go on there, go now and sign yourself up onto there you know, straight away on the freemium uh, model, you'll basically, uh, when it does go back up to £27, you won't be charged forever. So uh, it's a little wow. humble humble gift back. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Uh, there's a gift for you guys. How, how long have they got to do that? Two weeks? Two weeks. Within So within the two weeks, if you sign up, then that will be free for them forever. Free. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Suki, once again for uh, attending here. Next week, it's not next week, next month, um, we, it's the, um, okay, it's not even going to be month, is it? Are we in May already? Yes, we are. Wow. <laughs> Losing my marbles. The second yeah, May. Just about it is. So next month on the 20th of June, we have our next guest is going to be uh, Tom Mallins. Tom, Tom is uh, uh, another specialist in sales. So that's going to be, I'm, I'm, I've already got ideas and I think we, all, we already get the feeling it's going to be a fiery kind of a session uh, at the next one because Tom uh, is, is a specialist in the field of selling and, and getting businesses to uh, grow their client, client base and has fantastic ideas ideas um, and he's a bit of a specialist in that field so it's going to be a pleasure to have Tom on uh, on the on the show with us uh, next month so do put that in your diaries on the 20th of June at 7 p.m. Uh, we'll be back here at the Pathway Studios for now uh, have a great evening and uh, those of you who are around I will see you tomorrow at the uh, Chutney and Chat uh, networking uh, platform uh, hosted by Abid Khan where I will be uh, uh, keynoting, so it's a, it's an honor to have been asked to to deliver the keynote speech for that particular event, and I'm really excited about that, genuinely excited about that. And we've got some fantastic guests coming. So those of you who are going to be around, we'll see you there. Otherwise, have a good night, and we'll catch up soon. Thank you very Until much. Next time. Thank you. Thank you.